Greetings, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to Dev Chatter. My name is Brendan and today on Dev Chatter we are going to be working on a kata, which is always a fun time. Okay, so um, if you're new here, uh, we are a, uh, a welcoming community of developers who all enjoy uh, writing code, occasionally writing some code for fun. Uh, we work sometimes on code for games, sometimes just on programming exercises or katas and things like that. Uh, we really like big discussions about stuff. So if you like digging in and talking about uh, either things about the programming industry, finding jobs, uh, whether it's, you know, just how our industry works, things that are good and bad with it, uh, whether you like digging in and talking about the specific tech stuff, if you really think it's, it's neat how some framework works or something, you're in the right place. Uh, welcome. Uh, hi everyone, glad to see some people talking in chat. Uh, I see Sky Hoshi and uh, Saduki talking there. Um, so welcome, and uh, anybody else who shows up, uh, I don't want to dive too early in, but the task we're planning on working on today, uh, funny enough, I said yesterday that we would not be doing this, but hey, we're going to do it. Uh, so we're going to do Guy Royce's uh, vending machine kata today. Uh, I've got, you know, link there if you want to see it. Uh, I'm going to bring up the information here in a second so we can talk about it, go through it. I've never done it before. Uh, so we're going to figure that out. We're going to bash our heads against the wall, and uh, it should be fun. Uh, welcome also Digital Drummer, glad to see people showing up in chat. Um, why don't we go ahead and get started then? I see there's a little bit of shimmering on my light thing that's not perfect. I think adding another light is going to make me invisible. Yes, it's going to make me invisible, so we're not going to use any more lights. Um, my hair is already going. It's just semi-transparent. So I'm a ghost today, we'll just stick with that. Okay. I think I've given enough time for uh, people to arrive, so let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so this is the vending machine kata. Again, I've got it linked there, but let's talk through some of what's here. Uh, so vending machine kata. In this exercise, you will build the brains of a vending machine. It will accept money, make change, maintain inventory, and dispense products. All of the things you might expect a vending machine to accomplish. I do expect those. Um, the point of this kata is to provide to provide a larger than trivial exercise. Okay, so this is uh, clearly supposed to be a kata that is not like one of those you sit down, you finish in a half hour types, uh, which means there's zero chance we're going to finish it today. Um, so the point, uh, so it seems, so he seems to be implying that your goal is to try to figure out which tests you should be writing and which ones you shouldn't be writing, which makes me think that this is going to be a figure out, uh, <laughs> figure out what, what you can do. Uh, love it from Sudoku. The promise of more streams. There's always the promise of more streams. This this stream, what are you talking about? My last stream was like just a week ago. It wasn't like two months ago. Uh, hey, I heard coding. Welcome. Glad to see you. <laughs> Glad you made it back. Uh, no, I do remember you. Um, but, but you used to tune in a lot for your streams. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I absolutely remember you. I, I remember I think most of the people that were regular here. Reg, regulars here. Words. Words are challenging. All right. Um, so the question here is, so I see a bunch of features. I'm not going to sit here and read all these aloud. Um, so I kind of feel like we're looking at what's probably a, a, a pretty good uh, approximation of like the minimum viable product for a vending machine is like the features that are in this list uh being able to sel <laughs> as in if you put out a vending machine that could not select coin it could not accept coins select a product uh return some kind of change return coins be sold out um and uh that that's kind of one of those like if you don't have it then I don't want to use your vending machine. I don't trust it. Uh, and welcome. Thank you for that follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, so I'm not going to take this too much as like a vertical. So I am going to try to do a little bit of vertical slicing, but I am going to allow like an incomplete product partway through this because I feel like this is an MVP. I don't think you could release something smaller than this. So I'm going to treat this as if you complete a feature, you can have a feature done um, but your vending machine just doesn't work yet, 
instead of trying to do like a full slice of making the entire thing work. Um, <laughs> and welcome, Mr. Sh Mr. Shoji. Uh, I'm assuming that you mean you're working on believing that there's a, a stream happening, and uh, you, this is me trying to prove to you that I'm actually here and this is not a recording. Um, wasn't that timing good on this recording? I mean, this um, this live stream uh, for knowing about when you were going to show up. Okay. Um, well, let's go ahead and get started then. So. These are our instructions, and I created an empty solution, so let's have a look at it. You know what, I'll leave this here and just behind it. Whoops, that was not Visual Studio. <laughs> All right, let's pull up the solution. Uh, and where do we want to start? So how do we want our vending machine to work? Is our vending machine a library and we're calling its methods with these? Or is our vending machine something like a console application uh, where we're gonna tell it the coins we give it and it's returning something back? I'm thinking library and we'll consider the vending machine to be the interface. Um, and, and that's a separate layer. So, uh, fuel snable, hey, welcome, yes. Uh, in, in fact, it has frozen over. Uh, I, I started up a stream. Uh, so let's build a class library. Class library uh, C sharp. C sharp. There we go. Uh, we're gonna do it in core, obviously, and we'll call this uh, vending machine uh, core. It's not a, not the best name, but good enough. And no, I don't have .NET seven on here yet. Um, we're just we're just working with the regular stuff. Nothing bleeding it uh, today, at least. Okay, so what is our first task? Do we want to accept coins first? You know, if I were making an incomplete vending machine that didn't have all of the features, accepting the person's money is the first thing I would do. You want to give me coins? There are no products to buy, but you can give me coins. I will accept them. Hey, Sean, welcome. Uh, all right, so let's build accept coins. Because <laughs> that sounds fun. All right. Uh, so I don't really know exactly where we're going to start. So I want to do two things. First off, I'm going to make some tests. So we're going to add a test project and we'll just call this unit tests because I don't need anything better than that for now. Uh, and then, uh, what's the first thing that we're going to want to test? Uh, we probably want to do something like, um, instead of being called unit tests, let's call this. Um, accept coins. So I think accept coins is a perfectly valid thing for a method to receive it. You could go with like the user perspective and say insert coin, and then that would be an action on the person. But if we're thinking of this as like a method on our machine, then it would have a method for something like accept coin. Um, and maybe we only accept one coin at a time. Does it say that we have to accept more than one? So as a vendor, I want a vending machine that accepts coins so that I can collect money from the customer. The vending machine will accept valid coins, nickels, dimes, and quarters, and reject invalid ones, pennies. Uh, when a valid coin is inserted, yeah, so this sounds like inserting one coin at a time. Uh, the amount of the coin will be added to the current amount and the, and the display will be updated. Okay, when there are no coins inserted, the machine displays insert coin. Uh, rejected coins are placed in the coin return. Got it. Okay, so um, so we have a couple of things. So he wants us to kind of have a UI on here. So instead of having a UI, I'm going to have properties for that. And we can assume that those properties are getting um, like automatically displayed. And yes, no pennies. Yeah, pennies are not real currency. We should get rid of pennies. They're n <laughs> they are worthless. Yes, yes, we're, we're going with hot takes today. Uh, oh, hey, Kevin, you showed up. Welcome. Uh, yeah, it's like the good old days. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go ahead and create that then. So accept coin is what we want to call it. And we're going to say um, 
uh, why don't we start with the pennies one? Um, and we'll we'll have the uh, coin return. Um, uh, puts. Uh, why don't we say rejects pennies to coin return? Okay, so accept coin rejects pennies to coin return. That sounds right to me. Um, yeah, I, don't worry, Shoji. Yeah, I'll send you all your pennies, and uh, I'll send you all the pennies. Yeah, I'm. I don't actually have that many. I don't. I don't. I don't keep them. Uh, you should start streaming again. It's making me come. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, I. I didn't mean to stop streaming. At first, I stopped streaming because I had a. I had a newborn, and then I just worked and craziness, and I didn't get back into it. But um, here we are. Uh, so. Now I need to accept it. So I want to create something. So how about if we start off, you know what? I'm going to make a constructor. We're going to create the vending machine as the first step of the test. And so it will be the vending machine. And we will say, you know what? I don't even need to do it here because we're not going to do anything silly like mocking it. So it's just going to be here. Uh, it's going to be a private read only um, vending machine and we'll call it a uh, machine vending machine I think that looks good and now we're gonna say uh, machine dot uh, accept coin and then we need to have it accept some kind of coin and then we want to do um, well, I don't have should installed in here now, do I? Um, so, fluent, whoops, browse. Fluent assertions, thank you. <laughs> Always important to get uh, the, the libraries that you like uh, installed. So let's hope that it, it gives me fluent assertions nicely because I like writing. So instead of doing assert dot, you know, whatever equal something, uh, I like writing machine dot, um, uh, no, it's not, that is funny. It said accept coin, reject coin, but it's not what I'm, it's not what I'm looking for. Um, uh, coin return contains uh, oh, that is a funny guess. Um, coins, not penny. Um, and it should be um, not should contain, right? You know, I'll do that in a second. Let me get this existing first. So one of the one of the tricks that you'll run into, uh, whoops, don't do it there. Um, when when you run into people that do a lot of uh, like TDD stuff, um, we tend to write the the, the <laughs> we'll write tests for things that don't really exist. So like, you, we'll we'll have like failing builds for a little while while we're building this, and uh, now it's gonna make me reference this. Uh, yeah 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 yeah. So then that, and then this, it should go ahead and add a reference to that. And then it should automatically get it there. And now, come on. Wait, namespace. What? Oh, because I matched that. Um, I, I bit myself. I did it. See, this is why you don't do this. Now it's not. Whoops. Go the other way. All right. And then this one I'm going to go ahead and rename as well. Rename file. OK, is everybody happy yet? You're not happy yet. Namespace cannot. Oh, right. <laughs> now it's happy. All right, good. So now I can say accept coin needs to be a method. And we're going to have it you, you know, accept an actual coin. And then in this one, coin return, 
Uh, Fluent Assertion should be in the official unit test project. Greendolf, I agree. Um, I would be okay if they did Shudley. Uh, they could be Shudley or it could be Fluent Assertions. I don't care which one. Uh, as long as you include something that allows you to write in this syntax. They could build their own in. I don't care. Um, like <laughs> Extension methods for, for people that want to be able to write their assertions this way is totally reasonable, I think. Uh, so we want a property called coin return created on the machine object. Now, I think it's probably created that as an object or something. Yeah, see, object. <laughs> this is not implemented. That's fine. Uh, this I at least know I want it to be an array of some kind. And I am thinking it's a coins, uh, a coins array. Now, it could be a list of coins. So, you know what? We'll do a list of coins because it's a little bit easier to maintain. So we'll do a list of type coins. And then that should be so valid. And you're like, wait, what are coins? Well, we're going to have to create that type too now. Um, now, it created it as a class because I didn't tell it otherwise. But we're going to make it an enum for now. Now, keep in mind that if we if we at some point decided that we wanted to put more advanced logic into how the coins work, we could you know do something like a smart enum or whatever, make our own objects, doesn't matter. Uh, but now we have a penny. And you know what I'm going to do because I'm silly? Penny equals one. Ni nickel equals five. Uh, I can't type. Um, you know, a quarter. Uh, well, I could do a dime, I guess. Dime is ten. Hey, I tried six, huh? Yeah. You're not so smart, are you, little helper? No. No, eleven's wrong also. There you go. Okay, so penny, nickel, dime, and quarter, right? And uh, we're not doing a 50 cent piece. Uh, or, or the, yeah, no, 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 Sudoku, no, 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 don't even try it. That vending machine doesn't accept those. No, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. Nope. Uh-uh. All right, so now, now we take this and we say, okay, coin return should fluent assertions contain, and you might have noticed that they have, like, contain in order, so if you're, like, for, for some of these assertions that you're trying to do, um, fluent assertions can get you a lot of good stuff in there, written nicely. Like, should contain in order is very clear what it's doing. Um, so we're going to say that it should contain a penny. And then up here, we are actually going to pass in the penny. So now we're saying rejects pennies to coin return. Uh, so there's one other thing I want to check, and that is the total didn't get applied. Leading lady! Welcome! Thank you for the biddies. Um, I, I, uh, uh, I I always appreciate biddies. They're fun. Um, and, and no, Digital Drummer, we're not doing dollar coins either. No. No. And and to be honest, I, I really don't envy anybody that has to make vending machines be able to accept coins because, like, you pretty much have to make the decision of what stuff you're going to accept and reject. Because there are way too many, like, <laughs> you know, like, okay, well, there's this and there's that and there's this and this. Like, and I don't even, I don't even want to deal with having to figure out the difference between a, a, a Canadian quarter and a U.S. quarter. I'm sure there is one, but I don't know. Uh, like that, you could detect from a machine. I guess maybe they can you look at it? Do they weigh differently? I don't know. Um, two half dollars in the form of of paper. Yes, uh, we haven't been told to accept paper currency. Uh, and yes. <laughs> That would also add some complexity. And yes, hey Ed, uh, it is good to be back streaming. Um, this one, I do have a, a, a sharp end time. Um, uh, but until we hit that point, you know what? I'm going to safety myself here and create the, the list. See? No one... Look at that. Now it's not going to blow up with a null reference when we check it. It's not going to be like, oh, no, you can't do that. All right, there we go. So we've got coin returns, new list, and then we got this, except that. So this should throw a nice exception for us. Uh, let's find out. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yes, you're right, Sudoku. Uh, those are future features. We're doing the 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 uh, MVP build here. We don't need all of those. <gasps> failed. My test failed. How did it fail? What happened? This is crazy. What went wrong? <gasps> Not implemented. 
Who didn't write the code? I blame someone else, because clearly it's not me. Uh, let's see, what should we do instead? Uh, coin, return, add, penny. Done! Uh, you recently had Guy Royce at your home for drinks and dinner. Whoa! Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. Guy Royce is a, is a is a fun guy. Oh, thank thank you for admitting it, leading lady. I appreciate it. I'm 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 glad you owned up to it. I was gonna get blame to figure out who it was that did that, but you admitted it, so it's okay. Yes, peak peak Devrel, <laughs> peak Devrel, uh, is pretty much spending time with Guy Royce. I mean, clearly, that's I mean, isn't that why any any of us attend conferences is just to hang out with Guy Royce? I mean, seriously. Uh, uh, all right, so our vending machine. Oh, oh, right. My phone was just yelling at and I was like, why did my phone just beep? It's yelling at me and telling me that it's time to start the dev chatter stream because normally on a Thursday, this is when I should start my dev chatter stream. And if you want to know how annoying my calendar is, uh, I do actually keep my old schedule on there. So it really does yell at me all the time and make me feel guilty about not streaming all of this time I wasn't streaming because it chimes in and it's like, hey, you were supposed to be streaming, Brendan. And I was like, yes, I know I'm supposed to be streaming right now. Thanks for guilting me, phone. Um, <laughs> hang on while I get back to this meeting. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, yeah, and uh, <laughs> welcome, people. Uh I see Riley Dom, thank you for uh, resubscribing to the stream. Uh, Crimson Green, good to see you here. And it's really awesome to see everybody uh, back in the stream. We should have Guy lead us on a D&D &D adventure and live... You know, okay, so funny story, Sudoki. Guy might yell at me for telling everyone this, but he was planning on doing one of those at one point, and I was one of the players that was supposed to be in his game, but then he canceled it before we started, which is a huge bummer, because we could have had... Live streamed D and D adventures with you know me and Guy Royce and some other people would have it would um would have been fun. Um, yes, I know, right? Past Brendan has is like guilt trapping me with alarms that go off, yelling at me for not doing dev chatter streams. All right, let's go ahead and run our tests. Run the tests, magic tests. Hang on while I ghostly disappear. <gasps> You know, me, my ghostly disappearing makes sense because I had people recently commenting things like, you know, oh, wow, you're back. I thought you were dead. And I was like, no, no, that's all rumor. But apparently if I can zoom, go back a little bit and go kind of like invisible a little bit, you're like, oh, yeah, maybe he is a ghost. Maybe Brendan did die. That's probably why he stopped streaming. Okay. Uh, so cool. it works. Done. We're done. We're all done. Clearly we're all done. Rejects a penny to the coin return. All right, let's make the test. Let's make another one fail. Um, so accept penny. Uh, why don't we have it increase the total? Increase total uh, given non-penny. All right, so... Uh, so now we're going to say uh, machine... Uh, you know, let me check this. I said total. That may not be what Guy called it, and I need to make sure I'm using his language here. Yeah, okay, so he does want me to smarty noom this. So I'm, I'm going to smarty noom. I'm going to get around him on that. But I'm starting out simple. See, the funny thing is he's like, the temptation is this. No, I'm building a piece of the infrastructure, and then I'm going to adjust to that. Um, cause I want to do this feature and then I'll add that part cause I'm going to do the logic first. Uh, when there are no coins inserted, the machine displays insert coin. Uh, okay. So I need to, I need to have a display, but I'm not going to worry about that yet. Um, it, he calls it current amount. Um, but you know what? I think current is, uh, implied by amount. So I'm just going to call it amount. Uh, let's go ahead and create an amount property and we're going to say should be, um, given a non penny. So we're going to say 10 for now and give it a dime. Uh, 
Let's see. Uh, yes. Hey, Stool Penner. Glad you're here. Hey, Eaton. Welcome. Uh, more fun than the martial arts kata. Yeah, there there are a lot of good mad katas. Um, you thought you were just shooting another movie. I still haven't seen you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, clearly, um, we, we are the same person. Uh, yeah, yes, exactly. Actor by night and programmer by day. Yeah, yeah, right. That makes sense. All right, so this is going obviously going to fail. There is no amount I think is going to end up as probably object. Uh, yeah, it's, an, it's a null object. Cool. Uh, so clearly these are going to be integers so I, I could do something fancy and say like oh it's a it's a uint because it's unsigned but never do that even though you can in like just regular programming unless you have a reason to go into those don't do it <laughs> tempting but no you're just going to anger other developers when stuff doesn't work because every method is trying to use an int um don't 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 be that person uh okay so now it failed not because it was null but because it was expecting 10 and got zero. And also, one of the things I absolutely love, if you if you notice in, in this error message, it says difference of negative 10, which is fantastic, because a lot of times, if you've got big numbers or something weird, and you see like difference of one, and you're like, oh, I'm off by one, okay. And you know immediately to look for that kind of thing. In a lot of other cases, it's not all that helpful, but the times when it is helpful, you are so glad that it wrote that. Um, have a good one, Kodutron. Take care. Uh, so the easy answer is just set this to 10, right? Yeah, done. Done. Champion coder right here. Oh yeah, well done. All right, so now let's go back. And one of the things that I like that um, not everybody does, but I like going back to your old tests and making changes to make them a little bit better. So everybody always does the like, yeah, each time that you do the ping pong pairing thing, you know, where you go to the, blah, blah, you know, like the red green factors, and you go down to the next test. It's like, you don't always have to go to the next test. Sometimes you can go back and add something to a previous test that was implied or should be there. Because realistically, rejects pennies of the coin return. If it rejected it, that means it's zero, right? So we're only testing one thing, but there are two assertions we can make. Now, I know some people are like sticklers who's like, no, you can only have one assertion. No, you can have more than one assertion, but you should only be testing one concept at a time. Stool Penner, thank you for gifting a tier one sub to who got it? Word Racer. There you go. Uh, and so I'm going to add that assertion back to the previous test. And now we should have a failing test, and it's our previous test. And that's totally okay to do. So now that test breaks, and it says, hey, wait a minute. This was supposed to be zero. So clearly the answer is set this value to zero, right? Yeah, now it's going to work. Oh, wait, now we broke the other one. <laughs> but obviously now we need to we need to do the, uh, the correct thing, and that is, uh, first off, rename this to coin and beep a, a, a sound and everyone's, I apologize for the error of sound. It was in my computer, not yours. Um, <laughs> amount plus equals uh, coin. Okay, so at this point, um, we are now absolutely violating Guy Royce's rules for this kata, and I'm okay with that. Because he doesn't tell me what to do. I'm, I, I am an adult, and I am allowed to make my own choices. Uh, yeah, so about messing up my test. Accept coin. Dime. Should be ten. Amount plus equals coin turned into an int. Rejects pennies. Oh! <laughs> I didn't reject the penny, but see, now I've got the right thing on the test. Uh, if you could leave coin logic like this at the start, spends a cool and stuff, maybe the biggest cut. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Precisely. See, Mr. Shoji? That's perfect. Okay, so what we need to do is say. Um, if coin is penny, right? This is effectively what we want to have. This is what he wants us to do, is have an is penny. We're identifying the coin based on its properties. 
but I'm not going to write coin as penny yet. Even though I could, as an extension method, write that. Right now, I am just going to directly identify it, and we will fix to what he wants us to do later. Well, that's funny, because I, I could do that. And then, otherwise... Whoops. Otherwise, we want to do this. So, if we knew that it was a penny, go ahead and add it to the coin return. Otherwise, put it in here. Sounds perfect, right? Great. So now, this should actually work. There is one additional thing that we that we should have probably done, first off, because I did the if it's a penny, and I should have done the reverse, and the reason why is there's a tiny step you can do here to make sure that your test fails, and that is making sure that this one has an empty coin return. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, it should not give the, the coin back here, obviously. And I'm not putting that in the name. I think people can understand that if you increase the total, you didn't give back the coin. If you rejected it, you gave back the coin. I think that's simple enough that uh, that I shouldn't have to explain that. Um, so we're going to say should not contain. Uh, well, let's, act, you know what? Let, it's empty. It should be empty. It should be empty. Whoops. Uh, I was going to say don't contain the dime, but it, it's definitely clear to be empty here. And then if we do a test where there are some pennies in the coin return or coin, coins in the coin return for some other reason that we can check specifically for that coin is not there or the number that are supposed to be there or there. Uh, what if the coin is not a U.S. coin? What if it's Blake? Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's gonna, that, that is actually something I talked about a while ago is how do you tell the difference between all these various different coins that you could receive? And that actually I know is a problem. Uh, in some countries where the currency of your neighbor is not the same as yours and it's especially an issue here in the US uh, because Canadian quarters and American quarters look very similar. Uh, okay, so uh, I changed the test, let's run it, make sure everything's still good. Uh, yes, it's a 3D... <laughs> you know, Saduki, if you 3D printed a metal disc in the shape of a quarter that happened to weigh about the same amount, you might be able to trick it because I don't know which, which properties he says I'm supposed to check but but if you could emulate weight and size maybe i don't know which things we're supposed to look it described in there but i didn't look at it too carefully yet uh okay so we did that uh let's let's fix this test it should be better than this this is not a very good test um so we're going to change this to at least do a theory and we're going to say you know bring in a penny and then this is going to be a coins coin so i'm going to change from having a fact where we would just have one one test but now we're going to have test cases for this and then instead of passing that in here, um, I'm going to pass that in here. It's funny I put penny up there because it's the only one I'm not going to put in there. And then we're going to say um, coin dot value essentially, right? Um, but what I'm going to do now for now is say um, the the coin number like this, or you know what? No, we're going to do it. We're going to do it the right way. We're going to say um, ten, and we're going to say expected total. So um, int expected right so we're gonna hard code it so yeah it does mean that we're gonna hard code it in there but but we'll see hey ace flame seer welcome uh i have no idea who this guy is uh yeah carts uh don't even need to worry about wait for the all these carts learn that from the high school like okay uh yeah carts tend to be just shape and size but i think the most machines would include weight and oh yeah makes sense okay so now we have the dime and in theory that should work the same way and now if I duplicate this I should be able to do the quarter and that is 25 and now let's do our nickel and that is going to be 5 and now if we run this and yes I apologize if you're not uh, a US uh, currency person uh, US currency uh, for this vending machine. It won't work outside of the U.S., sorry. I think that's just kind of the way they build vending machines. They build them to only accept the coins of the place where they're going to be. Uh, Mr. P. Morris, hey, welcome. Greetings, and uh, welcome everybody that's in the chat and doesn't want to talk. You have no... Uh, <laughs> there is no expectation of anybody in here chatting. Uh, though if you want to, you are welcome to. Okay, uh, so... We've got that. And uh, in case you don't believe me, uh, those tests are running and passing as well. Uh, so, next up, so we, we seem to be accepting the coin. Now, technically what I could have done if I wanted to be 
a real stickler for the the you know one thing at a time is do this right so let's let's put that here and you'll see that these tests still pass um, but a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put that in there and then to make sure that it can fail um, when I write the next test that's supposed to make it fail I just yank that part out put it back and then put it right back again so all right so um, what I want to do is uh, change the way this method works so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna flip this so I wrote this as expected and then the coin but I'm gonna change so here's what we're gonna do instead I am gonna say um, we're gonna put the expected value first and then the second value so we're gonna say uh, coins dot nickel coins dot dime and I saw someone show up I will welcome you in a second don't you worry person that talked in my chat I will get there um, I didn't see who it was but I saw that it was a name that did not look like one of the names that was already talking okay so this technically flipped the uh, stuff Renee hey welcome greetings uh, you won't spook me from streaming it's okay uh, <laughs> but welcome okay so now now we flipped it and why did I flip it because I want to do this now it's an array it's a params array of coins so now what I can do is I can add as many coins as I want so now my next my next uh, so if I change this to for each uh, coin in coins whoops coins and I make that coins now I can take this line put it in here and all of a sudden we have uh, the same thing so now I have refactored my test to allow me to, to do more in this test because I didn't want to duplicate it and everything still passes so we switched from having one item to having a collection that only contains one item but now what happens if I insert two quarters So I'm going to insert the same quarter twice. Yep, that's what I'm doing. Now I think I switched the amount over to the negative, but I did not. So let's let's do it now. So we're going to remove this because we want to make sure always... Okay, something I want to point out, because we, we talk about this all the time. When we do red-green refactor, we're doing our unit testing and we're saying, hey, we're going to do TDD, so we're going to do red-green refactor. Something you absolutely need to do is... If your test passes on the first time, or you know it's going to pass on the first time because the logic's already there, that's fine. Do it. Write that test. That's okay. But what you need to do before you call it done is break the test. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Break the test. Because that is the only way that you know the test can break at all. Because the number of times I've written a test where, oh yeah, that's, that's testing that. It's like, no, it wasn't testing that. I just thought it was testing that. And then if you if I had broken the code, I would know it was actually not doing what I thought it was doing. Um, and so that's why you have to break it is because you got to be sure that it can break. Otherwise, your test didn't buy you anything. It wasn't really testing what you thought it was. Okay, so clearly difference of 25. We found 25. That's because I flipped this, so I, I broke this. Um, and so now I can add that. And I know, okay, yes, we really are testing that the amount is increasing. And so I know that we're testing that, and I know it can break if someone changed that. Okay, so now I think we need to confirm that it can do this with uh, two different values. So let's try getting to 35. Or uh, maybe something cost 75 cents. I think that makes sense. A vending machine could definitely have something that costs 75 cents in it. I mean, maybe not anymore. Is that too, is that too cheap? Do they even have stuff that only costs 75 cents in a vending machine anymore? Man, I feel old. Uh, order doesn't matter, just make sure that you have both red and green in there. Exactly, yes, yes. Yep, Shoji's correct. It doesn't matter the order that you had them. Like, we always say red, green. Like, red is preferable to be first, but you have to... But if you had green first, then do, you know, green, red, green, right? Like, I don't care what it is. End on a green and always make sure there's both red and green in there. So... Uh, yay! Okay, so again... 
Um, guy is going to yell at us because our coins don't... Uh, uh, the reason he's going to yell at us is because we used uh, enums instead of having coin objects that have data properties and it's having to identify. So what that means, that's the like tougher portion of this. And I am going to include that as part of accepting coins. But I wanted to get the basic structure first, which we have now done. Um, we accept coins and we reject pennies. Although actually, um, let's do this. Um, let's confirm it. Uh, so I'm going to copy this one because I like the idea of, of this structure. So I'm going to change the test name and change the data that we receive. So I'm going to get rid of these because we're only going to, we're going to start with one test case and I'm going to adjust. Um, accept coin handles uh, pocket of assorted coins. All right, we're going to do a pocket of assorted coins. So we're going to have a quarter. We're going to have a dime. Uh, we're going to have another dime. We're going to have uh, a, a penny. Um, coins dot quarter. Coins dot nickel. All right, uh, I'm going to put this on separate lines so we can actually see it. Uh, and I know some people hate splitting those, but I'm doing it. Um, so let's see, quarter. Uh, so we got two quarters, that's 50 cents. That's 70 cents, 70, uh, so 75 cents. Perfect. And the penny doesn't count. All right, so we got our we got our correct total for, for our first example one. This is the like, you know, does it really do this? And the coin return, so this is gonna fail right here. We're gonna let it fail, because we wanna see it fail, and then we're gonna make sure that passes. Um, because we want to have one, um, that, that, that still, do, yeah, okay, see, yep, expected empty, but found a penny in there. So, should contain single, and it's coins, penny. Uh, which I guess I could put this in here because it's that one, and then the same. Why doesn't it like that? Does it want more information? Oh, 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 oh. That's why, because it is that, yeah, I forgot, that isn't, that doesn't do that, I have to do this here, and then it should, and then B, well, you, come on, come on, you should have completed that for me, can you believe this, it's making me write my own code, sheesh, Visual Studio, don't you know I don't write my own code, you do it for me, handles pocket of assorted coins, with a penny. With penny. So there's always got to be a penny. You know what? I'm not going to put the penny in here. We're going to do it this way. We're, we're going to add the penny ourselves because we're saying there always has to be one added penny. Except coin. Penny. Because we, we required it, so I want to put it in there. Um, order doesn't matter, just make sure you have it. Yeah, uh, in the UK, you give coins names that are intuitive for the value. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. What are you talking about? A quarter makes sense. Now, I don't know where nickel and dime came from, uh, but a quarter makes sense because it's a quarter of a dollar. So that, that would make sense. And uh, a half dollar makes sense. So if you, if you call it a quarter and a half, now you're right, we should call the dime a tenth. Right, so you should have a tenth, a quarter, and a half. And, uh, it, yes, who even carries coins anymore? To be honest, I want to get rid of the penny and the nickel anyway, so that would solve that problem if you called it a quarter and a half. Um, there you go. It's how much of a dollar it is. Uh, yes, exactly. Thank you, Ricardo. <laughs> yep, that is, that is one of the best ones. Like, uh, I love that, I love that joke. Uh, and no, I don't think anybody carries coins anymore. 
Uh, I know I don't. Uh, I never have them on me, which is why vending machines just don't work. Uh, well, I, okay, the funny thing is, vending machines I use now, they take digital currency. Like, you can either swipe a card or use, like, one of the one of the phone apps. It's like, you don't even need the coins anymore. You don't even need the paper bills to use vending machines anymore. They literally will accept a credit card. It's like, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a silly idea, but it, it it's useful. Okay, so we accept and reject coins. Great. Uh, the temptation here will be okay. So when a valid coin is inserted, the the coin will be updated. With it. Okay, so so here's here's the part where he yells at us, and we now we're now going to fix. And I wanted to do it this order because I figured it was more fun to create the logic first and then to figure out this part because I consider those two separate problems. I don't want to solve them in one. Solving them in one is is too many steps. I want to solve them separately, and, and that one was more interesting. Uh, so, coin object that know their value. However, this is not how a real vending machine works. Instead, it identifies coins by the weights and size, and then assigns a value to what is inserted. Yeah, so my thought is it should receive a coin that has properties, and we will uh, change that into the coin type. So, my thought is that once it has identified it, it will handle, like, it will trigger the amount. Now, if he's thinking mechanics of a vending machine, yeah, they have, like, little slotty things that figures it out and adds its own, you know, fine. Um, and assigns a value to what was inserted. You will need to do something similar. This can be simulated using strings, constants, enums, uh, symbols, and, or something of that, of that nature. Okay, so here, here is what I, here's what I think we need to change. So, um, I agree. He's totally right. Let's go ahead and change our coins. So I called it coins, but we're gonna change it coin to coin type, um, and it can have the value. And this may change from being an enum to having more data later. Um, but we need to be able to identify based on the properties that were inserted. So he said things like weight and size. Um, uh, whoops. Let's do this. So we're gonna say, coin types okay so when it accepts a coin um we're gonna we're gonna move some of this logic and change a couple of things um exactly yes i am going to that's why i'm changing the name so um my thought is we need to identify the coins first so um the vending machine can identify a coin and then uh then call accept uh for example um, or maybe we accept and reject as two separate things. Uh, so maybe we make receive coin. So let's go ahead and, and start adding in that part instead. So we're going to make a, another test. Uh, I'm going to steal that and do this. And we're going to call this um, receive coin. Uh, hey, Wheatlaw, uh, <laughs> welcome. Uh, I have no idea who this is. I I don't know. I am I am as confused as you about who I am. So this does not receive one of this. This receives like an object or something. But for now, I'm going to tell it that it receives null. Uh, so this is receive coin. And maybe receive coin ends up being accept coin and we've just made it a larger piece. I don't know yet, but I'm, I'm just going in here and, and writing code. Um, a lot of times I, I really recommend don't think about exactly what you want. This is the point of, of commits and PRs. Start writing code, make changes, see what happens. If it works, go, go down that route. If it doesn't, back out, try something else. It really is the answer for a lot of these types of things. Okay. So we receive coin, and maybe when we receive it, uh, we do something like an uh, if is valid, accept, else reject. Maybe is what we're gonna do here. Uh, real life TDD in the wild, a thing of legend. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, rejects pennies to return to coin return. Yeah, so. Um, receive coins. Why don't we say, um, is 
the user puts in a coin. I think this needs to call the accept and reject methods. And what we need to do is not is um, not re maybe take the logic of re of um, of accept and move it down here. But for now, I'm not going to. We'll steal that in a minute. Um, so let's say. Um, identifies and rejects pennies to coin return sound right I think that sounds right okay guy did you tell me how much a, it identifies coins by their weight and size and then the signs of value to what was inserted okay so I need to get a coin by type. So I think we don't do this one yet. I think we need to identify coin first. So let's make that piece. <laughs> we all oh, that would be amazing. A documentary. We found this developer in the wild. Watches as uh the code gets created and blah 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 and she says yeah be weird anyway uh, so before I do this one identifies uh, panties so uh, so instead of receive coin let's call this identify coin so the method that we're going to create is called identify coin now instead of receive coin. So we're not going to receive coins. We are going to identify the coins. Okay. And it is going to return back a coin type. Yeah, I think that's going to work. So this is just going to identify the coin. This is going to have a new object in it. Um, what's the object got for properties? I don't know. Um, uh, weight equals, uh, <laughs> what's a penny weigh? Oh, I know what a penny could weigh. A penny is going to weigh one of whatever unit I say it does. And then, uh, <laughs> its size will be one of whatever size I say it is. See? I'm using my own scale. The scale is not linear. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, so this is my coin. So that is apparently the size of a penny. Um. Yeah, units. It's penny units. Yes, it's it, one one unit is the weight of a penny. We we call this the money scale, where pennies weigh one, quarters weigh twenty-five. That is, our, our units are very precise. Uh, okay, so now this returns back the coin. Our coin e equals that. And we're going to say coin uh, should be coins dot penny. It should identify it as a penny. There we go. Ex one quarter weighs 20. <laughs> I told you, Saduki, it's a non-linear scale. So, like, the units aren't linear. So, you're thinking linear, where, like, where 2 is twice as, as heavy as 1. That's not how this works. So, you got to remember, I'm using a non-linear unit. You're not used to that. I, I know, it's, it's super advanced, like, crazy. You'll never guess where I came up with the scale, either. Uh, okay, so I need to identify the coin. So we're gonna have the vending machine do that. And so what I need to do is this return coin back. <laughs> no Okay, here's the best part the code it suggested will Like is close to working like if you said value dot weight um, That'd be super super cheating, but no No, 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 no. Uh, we're not quite gonna do that now. I for now. I'm not like no, no, we're not doing it. <laughs> All right, uh, so we're going to do this. There you go. Um, and uh, what is it? It's um, 
Now I have to remember the syntax. What, hang on. Syntax search. Um. Syntax, Brendan can't remember it. Brendan's brain forgot the thing. Uh, no, 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 no. I've done this example like a million times and I can't even remember it. No, there it is. Thank you. All right, so it is. Yeah, here, let's do one of these. So we're just gonna return back our switch and we're gonna have uh, value switch. So we're gonna do a switch expression, write in an expression bodied member and everyone's gonna kill me, but it's fine. Uh, okay, so value switch is this and then we're gonna go right into the curlies. And then instead of this, we're gonna do a Uh, weight, e weight equals one, and I saw someone chatting, just give me a second, size equals one, uh, and that is going to yield a penny, right, uh, if I syntax that correctly, I think I did. This is the part it, it should be really yelling at, at me about. Um, no, null doesn't return a penny. We don't give them free pennies. We're just gonna throw an exception there, I think. Whoops. Did I get that right? Weight does not exist. Uh, okay. Round object. We'll call it a coin. Uh, we're gonna make a round object real quick. You know what? This would have just made one for me, wouldn't it? Yeah. Generate type in a new file. Round object. Uh, no, it really wants to do that. Why does it want to do that? Uh, then in, in this method, it's going to be a round object. And now I can make these off of that. Weight. Size. I know chat's yelling at me about something, I'm sure. What's chat yelling at me about? You really wanted to watch this, but apparently today is the day when everything at work catches fire. Yep, that's how that works. Uh, the code coverage percent on every class. Uh, just ignore the most syntax after C sharp six. Yeah. Uh, your intended code coverage is zero percent. You can't even achieve. Oh, I'm sorry, Wheat Lol. Uh, <laughs> Icy Black Deep is correct. It is. Uh, so this 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 horrible abomination that will answer the questions about. Uh, to, uh, yeah, I, I really hate it when people do shoot for 100% test coverage because you just end up with bad tests. Are uh, you raging? Uh, because... uh, yeah, well, good good job, Mike. Good job. Yeah, exactly. So there's a, a switch expression is the weird thing that I'm using over here. So essentially a switch expression is instead of writing it as separate statements, like a whole big structure, you can actually write a single expression that is your entire switch returning back the values as, as parts of that. Um, and I thought this was going to work. This should work. Um, let me have a look. Oh, oh man, I'm dumb. I can't believe no one, no one yelled at me about this. Because I'm supposed to do that, right? Uh, it should check those properties. So this is, so essentially it's doing pattern matching. It should check the properties. Oh, is it? Is it really? Is that what it is for the exact value? Yeah, okay. 
Why was I thinking it worked like, uh... Now, obviously, it's yelling at me here because I've got a duplicate. And it's saying, hey, hey, dummy, you got these two things. Uh, and I do. It's right. So this is a dime. Uh, okay, so... Uh, so this is called a switch expression, and it's kind of kind of a weird structure. Um, you know what? That's a that's a good idea. We don't accept those. Uh, take take the gum out of the machine. Okay, so that's a nickel and a quarter. Quarter, nickel, five, 25, 25, five. Okay, so um, if this looks, uh, okay, so uh, I just wanted to show this uh, because I was like, hey, we can do that, it'll be cool. Okay, so this is called a switch expression and what it does is it's kind of like we, so first off, it's a switch expression in addition to um, a, uh, yeah. Uh, so this is what it otherwise is. Um, so this is an expression body member. I turned this back into just a regular method. Uh, so this is just a regular method. Now it was an expression body member. Uh, it was an expression body method, but now it is not. Now it is a regular one. And then the next thing is this is using a switch expression, which the result of the expression is whatever value you had. So in this case, if you return the value of the expression, it does that automatically. And what you can do instead, uh, obviously I can change this. Um, can I, will it not just switch it back for me? It won't switch it? No, it won't switch it. Why won't it switch it? I just want it to switch it. I should have ReSharper installed for this reason. I'm sure it would switch it for me. Anyway, um, and yes, exactly, I see Black Deep. Um, it, I think it, it, it's weird that it didn't use the equality because I know that it uses the other ones for other values because I used to do an example where we would say like, yeah, if it's this and this, and if this value is different than this. Um, and uh, yes, Green Dolph, C Sharp needs much better enums than what it's got, if that's what you're making. Uh, yeah, as well, I thought it would be able to switch it because it could switch it to the object type and then do a uh, a when on it. Or uh, is it a when or a where? If you're not in that. Hang on. So if we did it when it wasn't doing the switch expression, it would look more like this. And you'd do like uh, a... It would be like case... Um, but it almost be like it's it's weird because you need to like match the case but then still do anyway this structure works for now <laughs> i forget what that's why i said i forget what the syntax was and i was like yeah i don't remember the syntax but you can pattern match it with that too um it just the syntax is different so anyway this in theory should switch for us from our round object to the thing so identifies pennies um, let's see if it works. Can we identify pennies? If it works, I'm going to break it and then I'll make it work again. So we're probably going to start off with a green, I think. And now we're going to go get a red. Now we're going to get a red, I hope. Cross your fingers for red. Now we got red. And is the reason correct? Whoops, I put it in an empty namespace. Whoopsies. I thought that did a root level namespace. My bad. Okay. Uh, hey, Pudding, welcome. Um, it, it's me. I'm I'm the I'm the person streaming right now. Welcome. All right. Uh, so now if we add that back in, that one should should, should, yeah, should suddenly pass. 
Exactly, Wheatlaw. I also like file, file scope namespaces, so I was thinking, like, yeah, I thought that was the root, and I put it at the bottom, and it wasn't. Um, I do I do like that, um, because it's a very weird circumstance that you would want two different namespaces in the same file. I kind of feel like if you have a separate namespace in your file, that should absolutely be a separate file. Now, right here, the only reason I didn't pull this into its own file is because I had a suspicion at first when we started this that this was going to be replacing the other one and that I was going to start down this path with an accept coin and instead of a, you know, a, sorry, a uh, receive coin instead of accept coin and eventually merge them and replace and then there'd only be one and that's why I kept them in the same file. But it's seeming like they're going to be separate and if that ends up being the case, I will separate them. Uh, I do like this approach because um, I can I can shift it out later. And yes, file scope namespace is a fantastic idea. Um, it is a really, really good idea. I'm glad they did that one. Okay, so identifies coins. Uh, yeah. So maybe we haven't received, can I make it receive a round object or is it gonna yell at me? Um, so maybe it's size so size int weight coin expected maybe that's what we have this receive and then we make this a theory instead of a fact and then we uh identify the coins <clears throat> yeah yeah exactly they're getting rid of lots of curly braces in c sharp uh hey nikki supra welcome greetings Yep, weekday stream. Uh, or any stream at all, really, as we call it. Coin type. Penny. Uh, so now we got the nickel. We got the dime. And then we got the quarter. I know how much a quarter's worth. Penny. Nickel. Dime. Quarter. There we go. Okay. Uh, so we get those values, and now... Uh, round thing. Var round thing equals new... You know what? Round object. Round thing equals new. Uh, I didn't make a constructor. Is it not gonna let me do this? Okay, there we go. I was like, why is it still squiggling me on this? There we go. Uh, so round thing is that, and then uh, round object, round thing, coin, Spanish, uh, and this should be expected. Okay. Now let's make sure our test fails. Run that. Um, uh, remove the... Oh, yeah, probably. Oh, you want to get curly braces and remove um, the parentheses. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But we 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 were we were writing that. I I will say that I don't care if you wrote the code before the test. Like, a lot of people get like be, try to become like sticklers on that. Oh no, you gotta make it. It's like you you can, but if your brain has already thought of the solution for how you're gonna do it, don't interrupt your brain from doing the thing that you were doing. Go ahead and do that. But then before you say yeah, my test works, make sure it passes. But if you're in the mindset of one thing, don't interrupt it just for the sake of of writing the test beforehand. Because that comes with its own problems. So let's uh, make one pass, and it should just be the penny one that suddenly passes. 
Uh, if it does, yes, it did. Okay, so there's the penny one. It passes, and then you doubted. Uh, and then let's run this, and then we should suddenly have nickels working. We suddenly have nickels working, and then we run it again, and we should suddenly have dimes working. We suddenly have dimes working, and now we should suddenly have quarters working. Okay, there we go. So now we can identify coins. So the machine identifies coins and then accepts the coin that it received. Um, now, the trick here is that we wrote this as identify the coin and uh, accept the coin, where we now do kind of want to write receive coin and accept coin doesn't really do much anymore because accept coin is almost like increase total. And so that is like, Proto Swede, we haven't used the half penny in a long time, and I'm not going to start. <laughs> oh, Nikki Super, you, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So, it's funny, a lot of people do end up, you know, falling out of coding. There are a couple of ways you can do it. You can either run into, like, different, you know, related things, like, um, you can end up be like getting stuck in management and you're in meetings and like writing emails and you know slack and teams and whatever all day long um, and then another way you can fall out of coding is, is switching into something else like you know ux ui design for example there are definitely uh, developers that transition into those areas and then you suddenly stop coding and it's like yeah yeah it happens yes 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 um uh, you know, we got, you, know, you, you got, you got bits too. If you want to talk about bits, we're not going to use those. Um, okay. So we created an identify coin method and an accept coin method, except we kind of want to do receive coin also, which I sort of mentioned. Uh, yeah. Pieces of eight. Yeah. Shaving a haircut. Thanks, Saduki. I, I did mention bits. You're right. Good job, Saduki. Saduki wins a prize. And we do accept two bits. It's right here. See? We just don't call it that. Just don't call it that. Because that's weird. All right. So I kind of want to change accept coin into receive coin. So I just kind of want to rename it and change what it receives. So let's let's do a little bit of chopping. Time to break stuff. Okay. Okay. Yes, Brutal Suite is, is correct. Um, the final resting place for some developers is uh, as the CTO of a company. I don't know if I'd ever want to do that, but because um, I, I have worked at time, like I've had time periods where I wasn't coding very much, where basically my job was more like, <laughs> you know, writing emails and talking to people and a lot less coding. Um, and I like coding. I like the non-coding stuff. Um, I do a lot of coaching right now, so before this I was actually working with a developer and just going through coding and I was just talking, explaining, answering questions, that sort of thing as we go through the code. And um, I enjoy that aspect of it also, where I'm not really the one writing any code, but I'm kind of pair, like, I'm, it's sort of like pairing, um, ex except it's like almost like guided pairing to some extent. It's like, an, you know, like we are still pairing. Um, but I'm not always the one on the keyboard because usually the goal is not for me to learn and gain knowledge, but for them to. And so like the more they type, uh, the better that it reinforces. So it's kind of a weird circumstance in that way. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Nikki Supra. Uh, so I, I have actually been an independent consultant for what year is it? 2022? How many years ago did I start? Mm -hmm. Six, about six and a half years, something like that. I've been independent. Um, yeah, so it, it's been a while. Um, so, uh, 
You're getting more hands-on coding after a year of project management and QA. Oh, that's always fun. Um, I, I hear lots of people say like, oh, I can't do that anymore. I've been in it. It's like, no, you can you can jump right back into, uh, you, you can get back into coding way easier than you think. So if you switched into like project management and QA work, it's it's easier than you think. You just need to give yourself time to get used to it. Uh, Nikki Subra, you've been following for three years, nine months. There you go. See? <clears throat> uh, three years, nine months. Hang on. That would have been uh, 2019. So, Nikki Subra, you actually wouldn't have followed until I'd been streaming for years. So, that's actually pretty impressive because I think my first stream would have been around 2017. Maybe January? First time I streamed something like that? Yeah, see, Brutal Swede's got uh, got four years, four months there. Uh, if Saduki's still in the chat, Saduki might have a pretty long follow age. Wait, hang on, I... I um, might, might have someone that's... Might have someone. Wheat Law, three years, four years. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go, Wheat Law. You're almost at four years. Four years, four months. See? There you go. Saduki's close. So Saduki would have would have followed a uh, little ways in. That's pretty good. Yeah, see? <laughs> it's funny how how, how long people have been uh, leading late. Four, four, wow, see? Even leading ladies got over four years. That's good. Good try, Wheat Law. Good try. Four years, six months, yeah. Where's yeah? Where's the chatterbot? Hang on. Um, hang on a sec. Let me see how long I've been following. Me. We're gonna we're gonna find out. Hang on. We'll we'll check. Cause I don't remember exactly when my. Oh, that's funny. I must have, like, unsubscribed and resubscribed. Somehow that's less than some of you. <laughs> also, let me click this button. Hang on. Wow, thanks, Brendonius. Wow, you've been you've been subscribed to 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 our channel for how long? Well, wow, yeah, that's so great. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thanks for carrying <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. So the ridiculousness. So you you see that 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 silly thing of me of my using. So I am Brendonius, by the way. If you didn't if you didn't get that, I'm both accounts. Uh, so I don't I don't stream uh, coding on that account. That's just my personal account that I use. Uh, I code on this one. Uh, that's actually using my gaming account. Because uh, yes, I use Twitch for gaming and programming. What? Um, and so the funny thing is, in order to get my own emotes. Because I want my emotes. Now, maybe there's some way that I could, like, add my emotes to that account also so it could use them. I don't know. But anyway. Hey, Nikki Supra. <laughs> Thanks for resubscribing. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, well, I, I appreciate it. Uh, it's 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 it, it's nice to have people that want to be part of the community. And I want to get us new emotes and stuff because I think they changed stuff about emotes that I haven't dug into that. Um, I do, I do want to upgrade that at some point. Okay. So we have this way to identify coins. I kind of need a way to create them also. Um, so the thing that bugs me about this is that I've got the code in the machine for identifying the coins and I kind of want to separate it out into like some kind of coin identification thing so that I can get fake coins for me to use for testing. Because um, I can create round objects, but I kind of feel like they need, like I either need round objects to be the coins and it gets identified as a coin, like the round object gets a type when it's, like maybe set when it's identified, but it would be nice to be able to just create example ones easily. So I think what I'm gonna do for now is just put them in here. Yeah, wooden nickels. We're gonna start accepting wooden nickels. Um, wooden nickels and Canadian quarters. All right, so for now, because I can, um, I'm going to give the round object a private constructor because I'm a terrible person and I like suffering. So I'm going to give it a private constructor. And by suffering, I mean you can no longer create a round object unless you're a round object. 
and so what we're gonna do is create a public uh, static uh, round object called um, uh, Penny. And that's a new round object. And this is going to have int weight, int size, and it's gonna set the weight and the size. And then we're gonna take in one, one. Uh, yeah, I do have a, I do have a hard stopping point, but I've got time. Thank you for the warning, Sudoki. Um, what about eight sided coins? Yeah, so I was debating, do I check that it's actually a circle? Um, and yes, I, I implied that someone stuck gum into the machine in our, in our rejection of anything that wasn't one of these sizes. Um, so we're going to create this for now. I'm not going to bother. I could go grab our Dallas's smarty noom and that would do the same thing. Essentially what it does is creates this structure that I've got here for me so I didn't have to write this and it will automatically do some other bits too. But I like writing it this way because then people get the concept and whenever I'm kind of like in teaching mode I kind of want to discuss both. Yeah, exactly, Wheatlaw. That's kind of why I wanted to use a smart name. He wants some kind of object, though, and you're right. This kind of jumps out of the domain a little bit, but the goal was for this to not be one file and to be a little bit bigger. So I kind of wanted this a little bit to help, and maybe maybe I'm jumping a little bit too far here. You, you could be right. Um, so let's rename the file to receive coin. So when it receives the coin... Um, it no longer, it does not take a coin anymore. I want it to take a round object that is a penny. And let's go to this. So this now takes in a round object. And then let's identify the coin. So we're going to call this received. And then that's the coin. So we'll see if that works. This one needs to change because I had this accepting a received coin also. Now here's the question, is it going to accept a round object nickel or is it going to complain that that type's not allowed here? Yeah, it's got to be a constant. Yeah, so the problem is because I use these here, this gets a little bit trickier. Yes, we need an abstract factory. Where's, where's my, where's my uh, coin factory? See, so I'm running into a problem because I, I because I didn't listen to Guy, and he said to start down this path to begin with, and don't don't come back to it, and don't just try to accept that you know what the coin is, be able to identify it. So now the question is, um, how do I get my example coin? <laughs> Mint to coin factory. <laughs> Thanks, Icy Black Deep. That's good. Uh, tch -tch -tch. So let's back this out for now. We're going to put that back to coin. Coin types. So that takes a coin types penny. We build again? All right, we build again. Whoops, we don't quite build again. Uh, Cause this needs weight, 
size. Doesn't accept them anymore. Uh, because we need a way to get them if we're going to do that. So we can just change this structure. That's easy enough. So we just say um, round object penny should be coin types penny. And we can just do one of these. And we end up with dime, uh, nickel, dime, quarter, quarter. That's a nickel. Uh, dime, quarter. All right, uh, <laughs> very nice, yes. Uh, so now we don't do this and we're back to a theory again, or uh, a fact again. So now we get rid of this stuff and we say fact, identify as coins. And then, yes, I changed the code a bunch, so now we need to make sure it still pass. Yes, exactly. <laughs> make sure the exact same objects are returned and the purchase is canceled. We're, yeah, I said I said that, Renee. I said that. We're going to make it fail now. That's, I said that. I'm sure I said that. Did I not say that? I might have said, I think I said it. Yep. Oh, take the gum out of the machine. Good, we got that. All right. So that failed. Uh, said take the gum out of the machine, which is great. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Excuse me. Um, so that accepts the round objects now. Let's guess that. It's tempting to go grab Smarty Noom. I don't think I'm going to. So the one option that I've got that I'm thinking about while I'm, while I'm sitting here, um, one option is to make whatever object it is that does the identification, because we could have one of those give us access to a penny, a nickel, a dime, and a quarter when we want it. Or... Um, you know what I need is I need a coin machine. You put in a dollar and it gives you coins. See? That's what we need. We need a coin machine next to the vending machine that accepts dollars. See? We should have done that kind of first. Accepts dollars, returns coins, right? Um, so technically it works right now. It can identify the coins and then receive them, but we're missing the outer point. Which kind of makes me want to go and do that, but... Again, I don't have all the time in the world to do this, so let's continue on. I probably should have been like, you know, make an eye penny and I negative. Yeah, thanks, we lol. Yeah, well we'll get we'll get right on that. We'll get right on that. Uh I want to start on select product, because that sounds fun. So let's do that. So uh ch -ch -ch -ch, vending machine. You need a new method. To do. Move to identify coin. Now I go to identify coin, which is simpler class. I copy it. I call new one. Um, 
select product. Uh, has a vending machine, and this says, what do we do for select product, guy? What do we do? As a vendor, I want a vending machine that accepts coins so that I can collect coins. As a vendor, I want a customers to select products so that I can give them an incentive to put money in the machine. There are three products. Oh, he's telling us the products and the prices. When the respective button is pressed and enough money has been inserted, the product is dispensed and the machine displays thank you. If the display is checked again, it will display insert coin. Now what's interesting is he says three buttons. So I kind of feel like it's weird because what I was expecting was machine and maybe there's, there's, there's a number like you pick any item between this and this. Um, have a good one, Saduki. Um, yeah, it's a little weird, but I, again, it's just an implementation for this. So it's a, it's a an implementation too. And the current amount will be set to... Oh, right. You know what? I didn't do that on the last one. I need the display. Let me add the display before we move on. Um... Instead of displays product, we'll say displays. Um, what was it supposed to display? Insert coin. Displays uh, insert coin uh, when total zero. Okay, um, display should be that, so right at the beginning, that uh, should be the property. This should hopefully create a display property for me that is a string, and it will start as hi. Okay, now we'll run this. This obviously is going to fail, and we should be able to make a little bit of progress on it. So, display fails. Great. It said, yeah, we we're supposed to have insert coin, but instead it said, hi. Yeah, that's clearly wrong. All right, so now it says insert coin, <clears throat> but now it's going to be wrong in a moment because we were supposed to have... When it received the coin, I think it's supposed to display the total. All right, when a valid coin is entered, the machine will be added to the current amount and the display will be updated. I'm assuming the display is gonna show the amount. So, there's a couple of ways we could do this. We can either just set the value and reset the value or we can have the value be calculated based on the current conditions. And either one's technically valid. Um, so we've got that one. Um, but we can now put this display check somewhere else, but um, even though we this does check the display, I kind of want to put it on the other one as well, on accepting coins. So I'm going to put that in its own spot and go to receiving coins and say... Display should be insert coin there. And then here, it should be whatever the total is. So that's expected, right? Expected. Uh, now this is obviously, the test is going to fail here. Um, yeah. Uh, so Ricardo, I think uh, if you if you saw like that amount of time, I think the, that that's the boot up time. So like the first test um, is the one that takes that amount of time usually, but then the the other ones you'll see are like twelve milliseconds. So I think that's just the boot up cost. Yeah, see, only the first one that ran actually took that because the, the the basically the timing measurement's too long. So that would be delay before it starts running the test. So if waiting that length of time is is too much anyway then yeah that's that's fine you can complain about that so see look it's expecting values but it's getting insert coin still because we're not updating it 
Thanks, Ricardo. All right, so let's try this. Uh, for our display, let's go ahead and return amount uh, dot two string, right? That'd be great. Um, but I want to do uh, amount greater than zero. Do that. Oops. Else that. Oh, derp. All right, and now when we go back here, now that I'm done derping, derp, 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 derp. <laughs> yeah, subtract a minute from time. That'll, that'll work great. All right, so tests are passing now, and, um, Okay, that was red for a second. I was I was like, wait a minute, why is that red? That passed. Okay, uh, so now we, we technically have this display doing a little bit. It's either saying the total amount or inserting coins because amount that it displays is based on that value. Okay, uh, so now we have some products. We want to select a product. Uh, so if I go to displays... I should now be able to say select product. Now here's what I'm wondering about on select product. Am I selecting by number still like what I'd be used to on a vending machine or does it have like three separate buttons for, you know, select cola, select, you know, whatever. I don't remember what the other two were. And that I don't know. So I think I'm going to go with, uh, whoops, select product and what are we gonna say when we select product how do we select it index I like number I'm gonna disagree with guy here and say that our vending machine accepts a number I think it's gonna be a number and I, so it says it has three right now but I kind of feel like the vending machine vending machines I use Normally they've got like numbers and they got numbers go up to like, you know, I don't know how many products it's got like, you know, 50 products, right? Let's say it's got 50 things in it. Cool. You know, number through 50. I don't know how many are in those things. 50 sounds right. I'm sure there are vending machines with about 50 items in them. Probably not 50 because the numbers are is maybe like six across and something down. So it's not going to be exact. I don't know. Depends on how many across they are, how wide the products are, etc. I'm sure there are some with hundreds of items. As long as they're all small. Um, so when you select a product, what happens? It checks to see if there's enough money. And then dispenses it. If there, ah, here we go. If there's not enough money, I kind of, that's where I was thinking I'd start. Then the machine displays the price and the, displays price and the price of the item and the subsequent checks on the display will be, dis, uh, will display either insert coin or the coin. Okay. So I kind of want to do that. Uh, so let's say select product displays um price when not enough money so currently i haven't inserted any coins and so i should be able to select a product and it should just display the price so if i select product number one and no vending machine i've ever seen indexed at zero just for the record before someone yells at me for setting cola to product one instead of product zero um, cola, candy, and cola, chips, and candy. Um,
Uh, display. Uh, oh, whoops. Uh, should be. What should it display now? We are expecting to see price. And then. Price 100. So I think he wrote it as $1. I want to write it as 100 because it's one of those old machines that just does the like letters and the thing and they, they can't fit it very nicely. Uh, so price 100. So we select the product one, which says price 100. Okay, so I want to change the way that we did this because thinking about this, I think that the vending machine should be changing this, this as it goes along. So I want to set it to this. And then when we insert coin, that's when we change it to be the coin amount. So, um, there we go. Okay. Uh, now let me make this test build and then I'm going to make sure the other tests pass with that. So this test clearly is going to fail, but the other one should pass. Okay, other ones are still passing, this one is failing. Okay, so we are selecting a product. We're selecting product one. Why won't, there it goes. Number. Uh, display equals price 100. There we go. Done. All done. Yay. Passes. Okay. Select product 2. Uh, that should be price of 50 and select product 3 should be price of 65 Is that what they were 150 65 yep okay excellent Okay, expected price 50 and, and instead got price 100. What? It's almost like we didn't write the code yet. Okay, uh, so here we need some way of looking up the prices. Uh, so let's change this to be price equals 100. We'll change the way we did this. And say 100. Right? Now ideally, still fails with price 50, which means the 100 is still working. So now we need to change it so that this, this comes from somewhere. Um, so this needs to get price, get product price, number, and then this method will just return back the, the product price. And yes, I'm going to switch it right now. Case, one. Turn 100. Case 2. Return 50. 65 for case 3. And a default, we're going to throw an exception. Because right now I'm not handling that. 
Now probably that's going to be the, hey, no item there kind of display response, but for now I'm just throwing an exception. Expected price to be 50, but got price 100. One, two, three. Did I not pass in the number? I actually thought I was going to work that time. Price get. Oh, pfft. derp. <laughs> derp. 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 Ah, uh, yeah, that was silly. There we go. Much better. <clears throat> okay. So now we're doing that. But what happens if you if you had enough money? That's now the question. Uh, and if we had enough money, then we should be doing something with it. Fact. And in this one, we need to say uh, select product. Uh, let's see there uh, when the respective button is pressed and enough money has been inserted the product is dispensed and the machine displays thank you okay so dispenses product if enough money. So we'll say machine Can I set this? Ha <laughs> ha the machine's broken! No, I'm just kidding. Wait, what? Uh, oh, receive. Yeah, that's what we call it. Receive coin. Yeah, the machine receives coins. Uh, let's give it a quarter. All right, so now we have a dollar in the machine. We give it the coins, and then we say machine select product one. Machine display should be what did it say thank you thank you what else did they say they said that the uh, dispensed will say dispensed should Create a dispensed property, which is going to be, uh, I don't know, a list of string. Okay, so we now have that dispensed items. Should contain single and single should be Cola? Cola! I'm going to capital letter here, even though he didn't put it in there. Um, okay. So it's going to display thank you. We're going to say it contains a single, and there's going to be a cola. That makes sense. This obviously is going to fail, but that's okay. Yep, so it's supposed to say that instead it's displaying the price. 
Because we never told it what to do if you had enough money. If price is greater than amount, then do this. Now we're expecting this to, f to fail for a slightly different reason. The other one should still pass. See, now we expected thank you, but we got... ...100, because it's displaying the amount still. Hey, C-Films, greetings. Glad you're doing well, and welcome to the stream. All right, so now we, uh, we've we got that piece, and now we want to display the correctum word. Because apparently the display is the part that we're failing on right now. So now we're going to say thank you. So if we had enough money, we're going to say thank you. But now, uh, in addition, I should check the total, because the amount should have been reduced. So amount should be... Zero, because it should have reduced our amount to zero, and it should have dispensed the product. So those are our, our failing things. So now we should be at that failure. So expect the amount to be zero, but, but found 100. Okay, so now... Now the funny thing is, I'm setting it to zero. We're not returning change yet. So keep that in mind. They're not getting their change back. I'm setting it to zero. Uh, because it should be. It should be zero. There shouldn't be any money left. When Whenever you put in too much money in a, in a vending machine, it returns your change uh, and gives you back the product. Okay, so now it's expecting to contain a single item, which it is not. So now... Um, we want to say product... Uh, whoops, dispensed product, Disp dispensed, oh, there it is, <laughs> I could not see it, uh, so we're going to add a dispensed item that is, get product name number, derp, name string cola chips candy is that what it's supposed to be cola chips candy yep uh welcome ah <sighs> There we go. Now it did it. Okay, we have dispensed no change. Let's see if we're supposed to. Okay, when the button is pressed and enough money is the the product is dispensed, it displays thank you. If the display is checked again, and the current amount will be set to zero. If there is enough money inserted in the price and yep, yeah, okay. Select product does not talk about making change, that's the next feature. So we are keeping the change. Yeah, my kind of vending machine. That's good stuff. All right. Um, I think that is a decent place to stop. As I said, uh, I have a time cut off today. Uh, but I want to make sure that I thank everybody for uh, swinging out and uh, hanging out with us today. Um, it has been uh, pretty awesome to be able to uh, come back and stream again. Uh, so I'm hoping to do this more. Uh, I want to make sure that I tell you, don't leave yet. Um, I have actually been putting videos on my YouTube channel, so make sure that you check those out if you haven't been. Um, there are new videos that have been going up there. I've actually got another one scheduled to come out on Monday, uh, so I'm trying to do a few things with that, um, and uh, hopefully we can keep this going. Um, I do still need to do that refactoring kata at one point, though uh, I wasn't going to do it today because I wasn't going to be able to get set up in time, and I've got too many other things going on. Um, but hopefully I can squeeze in little streams like this. Uh, Coded, ah, coded beard, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, we're, we're wrapping up the stream, um, but uh, uh, we may continue this. Uh, we may continue this again, um, either starting from scratch or starting from this one again. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm hoping that I can get a few little short streams here and there. 
Um, and there'll be hopefully daytime weekday streams, but not necessarily on my old schedule. We'll see what I can do. Um, but it was awesome seeing everyone. Uh, so um, I guess, yeah, fun, fun being back. But uh, if you don't follow me on Twitter or, uh, or you're not in our Discord, uh, please go check those out. You, I think you can find links to those down below. Um, and uh, our Discord is usually where I announce uh, that I am planning to do a stream. So uh, if, if you do want to make sure you catch the future ones, that's the place to look. Uh, because uh, I, 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 I mention it more in there than I even do on like Twitter or anything. So uh, the Discord's the place to be. And I usually try to at here when I do that instead of doing like a, a channel or anything like that. So you shouldn't get those big notifications. Uh, it's only if you're actively in Discord that you're going to get the notification when I when I ping the chat. So either way, it was awesome seeing everybody. Uh, Frozen Beast, hey, uh, thank you for uh, saying hi. Uh, Brutal Swede, Coated Beard, uh, everybody for hanging out, all the mods that were here. Uh, not that we needed them today. Uh, and just everybody, it was awesome being back, and I will see you again next time. Take care and happy coding, everyone.